Hello there, and welcome to another video in our How To Game Maker series. Uh, we've been focusing on player movement, and we're kind of finally there, so we can move on and look at something else. So today, we're going to do a How To on items, and we're going to follow up that very quickly with a video on power-ups. So an item in a game is essentially something that you can pick up. It won't give you any special abilities but it may add something to your score or your inventory or something like that. So the ideal thing or the easiest thing to do is, is a coin. So we're going to do a, a coin item today. Uh, it will not take very long at all. And in fact, with all the stuff you guys know already, you really should be able to do this one yourself. Um, you do have the the knowledge to do it. Um, just a matter of working through it step by step as ever. You know, it's a problem and you break it down step by step. Once you've done that, it becomes 10 times easier. Anyway, let's get going. So we have a situation where we have a, a player and a wall sprite. So if I run the game, I can show you what it does right now. That's what it does. So you've got a, a player that can jump. Okay, Ooh, pretty high. Um, and we're gonna add in a coin right now. So the first thing to do is get your coin sprite. I would suggest get an animated one. It looks cooler. But you don't have to. Um, and remember when we're bringing in animated uh, frame based images into Game Maker, we need to lay them out horizontally and um, append the word underscore strip um, let's say let's say if the image had nine frames it would be underscore strip nine at the end okay so I'll show you exactly what I mean first thing we need to do is create a sprite that'll be our coin sprite so we'll call it SPR underscore coin and we will import an image. Here's mine. So SPR underscore coin underscore strip nine dot PNG. That underscore strip nine tells Game Maker that it is an animation of nine frames. And Game Maker will do all the work for you. Put it in nine frames so you can play it immediately. Now if I play this it'll be too fast. So you can adjust the frame rate, frames per second, which is handy. So let's just put it down to 10 and then play it again. And that's perfect. And it's 32 by 32. And that's it. And that's, that's all we need. So the next thing, next step would be create an object. And assign or associate the sprite to it. Now, now a lot of people, when they do this, they go and create another sprite. Now we're creating objects here. So these folders, objects, rooms, scripts and sprites, they're, they are just folders. They don't have any special meaning at all. You can put any asset into any folder. It really doesn't matter. What matters is what you create, okay? So we need to create an object here. So don't go and create another sprite. So create object and assign the sprite. Well, first let's name the object OBJ uh, coin. Yep. Um, let's check. My fan is going nuts here. I'm not sure why. Assign the coin to it. Done. So we're pretty much done with the coin. And now we can then pull the coin into the room. I've already got it selected. I've got the instances left selected. So I hit Alt, immediately see it. And I've got a coin, another coin, and another coin. Okay, so collisions. So you'll be glad to know we're not gonna, we don't have to code these collisions. We don't, 
we're not going for these pixel perfect collisions here. We're just going to we're just going to use the collision event, which is much handier. Now it's better if you put a collision event on the player because then because you've only got one player, so at, at any time game maker is checking whether the player is colliding with a coin. Okay. So in the step code, or in the event code, which is going to run every frame, it's going to be checking whether we have collided. Now you do not want that in every coin. Let's say you had a hundred coins on the screen. If you had the event in the coin, as opposed to the event in the player, then a hundred coins would be checking hundred times every frame which would absolutely kill your game stone dead so it's better if one player checks for a collision rather than a hundred coins are checking for a collision all the time so let's stop talking and create that collision event so you go to the object add event go down scroll down to collision objects and you should see object coins so we want to create an event which represents a collision between the player and the coin. Click that and there you go. So what do we want to do in this event? Again, if you've broken down this into steps prior, you'll know what you want to do. Well, we want to destroy the coin for sure. So now, because this is attached, this event is attached to the player, the, um, the kind of, the object, um, well, well let's, just, let's just say if I did instance destroy like this what do you think would be destroyed would it be the player or would it be the coin well it's the player because this is attached to the player this is, this is an event from the player okay um, because we've got a collision We've got the object that is colliding and the object that is, it is colliding with, and that is defined as the other object in Game Maker. So, if you want to use the other object in the collision code, all you do is this. You say with. brackets other squiggly brackets and anything you do inside the squiggly brackets applies to the other thing the thing you collided with in this case the coin okay so we want to destroy the coin we'll just put instance destroy in there because inside the squiggly brackets everything refers to the coin so that will destroy the coin now the other things we want to potentially do and I'm not actually going to do these I'm going to leave you to think about these because they are they're pretty easy we'd probably want a sound um, so we could do this before or after I'll put it after play um, item sound and what else do we want to do we might want to update the score or update the number of coins so I'm going to put update score or number of coins or we might want to do both and I'm not going to do that because that's not the real point of this and it's pretty easy anyway all you do is have a score variable and add to it or you'd have a sound in your sounds folder note that we don't have a sounds folder here but you can create one quite easily so you just go create group like this and you go sounds you find a sound drag it in there and in the code play the sound easy so that's it that's it so let's test it
All right, so there's our spinning coins. There's our player. There's this ridiculous jump. And there we go. Collect, collect, collect. Done. So as soon as we touched, as soon as we collided with the coin, it destroyed the coin, as we said it should do in the code right here. Now, in the next video, um, I'm going to do power-ups, and I will put a sound in, and I will update the behavior of the player so that it actually gets some insane ability um, which will be fun all right so that's that so that's that's items very easy you should be able to go ahead and do that now we'll see you in the next video